I wanted to funnel into our first segment about Senator Bob Menendez by talking about my trip in Pinehurst, North Carolina, because I was hanging out with a lot of my high school friends. And, you know, look, I've said this a bunch on the show. You're allowed to be conservative, liberal, progressive, libertarian, uh, moderate, whatever you want to be. That does not bother me. Talking about policy, how things impact somebody, et cetera, et cetera. That doesn't bother me at all either. I would like to drill into more things that will affect millions of people or people like you and I, Nick, or people that are listening to this show, right? Um, the, the reason why the conversation funnels perfectly into Senator Menendez is we started getting into a conversation around money in politics, specifically billionaires like a George Soros and billionaires like a Rupert Murdoch, Sandy Alderson, uh, the Koch brothers, who have all donated money, whether it be political, political action committees or whether it be through media buys, whatever it is, to try to influence elections or influence people's opinions and what it is they're going to end up voting for, right? Well, here, we were having that conversation, and here we have, on the eve of us playing golf, a story breaks about a senator from the state that Nick and I are both from and call home, New Jersey, and Senator Bob Menendez, being charged by the Southern District of New York for bribery, committing bribery and accepting thousands of dollars in payments and gold bars uh, and maybe even helping the Egyptian government. Take a listen to how this all played out as the story broke last week over on MSNBC. New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez and his wife indicted by a federal grand jury. The senator is accused of using his office to help several businessmen from New Jersey as well as the Egyptian government in exchange for receiving hundreds of thousands of dollars in gifts, including cash, a luxury vehicle, even gold bars. So in June of 2022, federal agents searched Menendez's New Jersey home. They found fruits of the pair's corrupt bribery agreement with three businessmen, excuse me. This is all according to uh, what the press conference by the Southern District of New York, and we're going to play a little bit of the sound from the, the lead uh, U.S. attorney there that brought the charges and gave the press conference. Investigators found um, $480,000 in cash, some stuffed in envelopes, hidden in clothing, $70,000 in Nadine Menendez's safety deposit box. Again, that is the wife of Senator Bob Menendez. They found $100,000 worth of gold bars provided by Hannah or Diabs or folks, I guess, that are part of this, the three businessmen that are, are mentioned in the indictment. And in exchange, Menendez allegedly gave sensitive U.S. government information that, in using quotation marks here, that secretly aided the government of Egypt and improperly advised and pressured a U.S. agricultural official to protect an exclusive contract for HANA, which is a company, to be the exclusive purveyor of halal meat to Egypt. And now I'm starving for my car over on 49th and 6th Ave. Um, so I had to make a joke there, sorry, because <laughs> I literally was just in New York a few weeks ago. Now, I want to play in a serious note from the U.S. Uh, attorney from the Southern District of New York of what these charges are against Senator Menendez. Take a listen to this. Three New Jersey associates and businessmen starting in at least 2018. The senator and his wife accepted hundreds of thousands of dollars of bribes in exchange for Senator Menendez using his power and influence to protect and to enrich those businessmen. So that was Southern District Attorney there, like I mentioned, Damian Williams, uh, U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York. Now, I mentioned in the opening that this is not the first time that this senator has gotten charged with bribery charges before. Right. Back in 2017, going into 2018, Senator Menendez was charged in another uh, alleged bribery scheme in which he allegedly accepted gifts from a Florida eye doctor named Solomon Melhen, who was a close ally of the senator. Again, in exchange for using his power of his Senate office to benefit the doctor's financial and personal interest. He pled not guilty to the charges. And there was a mistrial that happened in November of 2017. Um, and, and so, of course, he went on a rampage saying, you know, like to those of you who were digging my political grave, you could jump into my seat. I know who you are and I won't forget you now. Now, listen, a mistrial doesn't mean that they can't bring your charges again. 
Um, but just an FYI there, uh, Senator Menendez. But the fact that we have a U.S. senator that has been in office for decades now um, charged twice with using his office to secure bribery and paper trail of payments, especially what the, the Department of Justice found here in this indictment, $408,000 in cash, like I mentioned, $100,000 worth of gold bars, is alarming, and it should be covered by every single network for the next weeks upon weeks. And I say all this as somebody who, uh, over my right shoulder or left shoulder, excuse me, for those of you watching us on YouTube, know that I have a book up here by Alicia Menendez, who is the daughter of Senator Bob Menendez, and who happens to be a mutual friend of, of Nick and I's with, with somebody else that you guys have heard on the program, guys and gals out there have heard on this program. And so I happen to know Alicia, and Alicia has a popular show on MSNBC called American Voices Saturday and Sundays between 6 to 8 p.m. And she was not on air this past weekend when the charges broke. And to me, that is wrong. That is incredibly wrong. And this is part of the reason why there is fodder by people on the right that say MSNBC is propaganda, not because of what they're saying in their primetime program or things like that, but actions like this. You know, we don't want to sell access journalism. I get that. Like when Chris Cuomo on CNN would have his gut, you know, his governor, who's his brother at the time, uh, Governor Cuomo in New York during COVID, always on for these interviews, right? They didn't have to pay to get that access. Well, here we have actual charges being brought against the senator. And we're going to take his daughter off the air who happens to have a platform, whether or not she pushes the needle in either direction in terms of public opinion, uh, it doesn't matter. We want to hear from what is happening. And here is somebody who happens to have a show on the weekend and we take her off the air. I think that's incredibly wrong. I'll let you speak more on that, Nick, as well. But first, what do you make of right now? You and I have been watching the news over the last couple of days slowly trickling in about this, some coverage here and there. Then we cut to something else with the government shutdown that's looming, the impeachment inquiry. You know, I put on MSNBC today in their primetime programming, Jen Psaki's talking about Trump and the United Auto Workers strike because the president's going to be going there on Wednesday to give a speech. And I'm like, where is the coverage of a sitting member of the U.S. Senate? Two times being charged with bribery. You know, I had a lawyer friend of mine who listens to this program and he'll laugh at this. He said to me about a former WFAN radio host back in New York who got charged by the FBI. The FBI doesn't just show up at your door, man. Charges just don't spin out of the air. They don't just show up out of nowhere. You had to have done something, which is why it's so comical about former President Trump saying, if they could do this to you, they could do this to anybody. No, they do it to people who break the law. Senator Bob Menendez has shown a pattern of breaking the law. And this is the second time the governor, the government of the United States is bringing charges against this man. This should be on the front pages, every single place and in the A block on repeat across networks. It is wild to me that it is not. And it speaks to the hypocrisy of how this stuff is playing out. What says my co-host here about now that we've talked about it, and we're going to talk about it in the next segment too with Jessica, but uh, that we I give you all the summation here. You heard from Damian Williams in the Southern District of New York. You heard how, by the way, that clip was from MSNBC that I played when the news broke, and that was Anna Cabrera in the morning program. Uh, what do you make of the charges second time with Senator Menendez, the Dems that are actually calling for him to resign right now, like Governor Phil Murphy, Sherrod Brown, a senator from Ohio. Like, what do you make of it all? Yeah, and actually, you know, our cur- one of our current senators here, you know, John Fetterman was the first senator to come forward and, and ask Senator Menendez to step down. Um, you know, it's a personal thing for me because obviously being a resident of the state of New Jersey, and I've mostly lived my lived in the state of New Jersey, it's embarrassing. You know, I, I did laugh a little bit when I first heard this because, you know, obviously there are some places in this country where like Florida comes to mind often. We joke about Miami, Miami corruption, maybe because I listen to a lot of you know, Miami based radio programming. But New Jersey every now and then comes in and reclaims its block. And this is one of those times. And the story of, of 
the senator has been around for a while. I mean, Mike, you broke it down beautifully a moment ago. You know, there has been a paper trail of this person who has really just operated with that with impunity, despite having this hang against him. And what just broke the other day seems to be seems to be finally what's about to be his undoing. Rightfully so. Um, you know, as as Mike was talking about this, you know, I, I did a quick search of, you know, how do we better understand, like, what's the landscape of criminal activity or investigations against members of Congress? And folks, I would direct you all to a fantastic website, um, govtracks.us, right? Government Tracks is a website that breaks down, you know, really just basic information about, you know, sitting members of Congress. And if you simply go to this website, govtracks.us slash misconduct, it will take you to a running record of acts of misconduct against members of Congress. And this happens to be where if you go there, you will see what we know about George Santos. It will tell us about what happened, what's been going on with Mark Meadows. And then, of course, you get to this section on Robert, um, on Senator Melendez. Melendez or Menendez? Why am I getting it's Menendez, Melendez. Menendez, Menendez, Menendez. Okay, so, but it's stunning though, and I would recommend anyone going to the website. But Mike, as you were talking about it, you know, quickly, I was just listing, just from recent memory, what we know has been going on, you know, in our government. We have a former, we have a former U.S. president who's been indicted four times. We have a current senator and Robert Menendez with going on with what he has happening. We have a sitting member of the Supreme Court that more and more stories come in every day of receiving lavish gifts um, from one Harlan Crow. Then we have someone like George Santos, who has now been revealed to be a flat out liar. Um, it's stunning to me that we have some of the most despicable people making the most critical decisions in our country. Um. I don't know at what point we've gotten to a place where this level of power can produce this level of corruption. I mentioned about the about government about gov tracks, and one of the things that they have on the website is a really great graphic about the different types of misconduct that we see against members of Congress. And really, when you look at it, there's been a a massive uptick since the 1970s of these different types of examples of misconduct. Now, funny enough, I did look up the 1790s and I was curious, like, well, what kind of misconduct would appear there? And there was very little numbers. Bear in mind, of course, that, you know, when you think about people who own slavery, I just found this funny. I'll share this with you all. You know, currently in the history of the United States government, there's been about 11,000 people who've served in Congress. So 11,000 people, 1,700 of which, at some point in their lives, owned slaves. That's 15% of our elected officials owned human beings. Fast forward to now, where we've got people hiding gold bars, we've got people hiding government documents. So the larger thing that comes to me, well, there's two things here, the media coverage I'll get to in a second. But the first thing it stands to me is, like, where did we go wrong? How do we have people that I don't think Someone like Robert Senator, like Robert Menendez was, you know, came out the box as a criminal, but somehow in this role as being a member of the United States Congress, somehow emboldened him to take these to just take bribes and 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 think nothing of it. And we're seeing it. We're seeing this person who's being who's been asked, step down. You're done. You're done, Zo. Get out of here. And he's like fighting this. It's amazing to me. Um, to the question about coverage. So on Friday night, story breaks, story broke in the afternoon, Friday. I'm, I'm watching MSNBC. I'm not going to name the host. I don't want to get into a back and forth about this on Twitter, but the story that this person ran with what they were talking about was book bannings. Now, if you find folks and many of you do this, listen to the other show I appear on. Not a peer, and I'm a co-host. What am I talking about? On Educate US. We talked about book bannings. We've talked about it a lot. It's a recurring situation. We see it in many school districts. We're seeing it in the attitudes of parents. But if I asked you, 
today fr- on Friday, okay, the 22nd of September tw- 2023. What should we be spending the majority of our programming talking about? Something that's been ongoing or a member of the United States Congress indicted for bribery who has been found to have been discovered with gold bars in their home and to the tune of $480,000. Folks, we all have a little bit of petty cash in the house. I do. My, now, Mike doesn't really carry cash anymore, but Mike's got some, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of ducats stowed away, you know, somewhere, 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 right? My, I go visit my parents sometimes. My dad's got, you know, a little bit of cash. Um, it's like, oh, you never know, right? No one sits on $480,000 of just straight cash, homie. You know what I mean? So there's just all kinds of insanity going on. However, what is the, t- the, the topic on the show was about book banning. The person even had on a comedian trying to make light of this. And I'm just sick, shaking my head. And Mike has talked about this ad nauseum about knowing your sources, about paying attention to really what you're being told, like what's being informed here. And I just sat there and just, I, I first, I'm just taking you folks through my process. At first, I was grateful. I was grateful for this show because in this time that Mike and I spend together throughout the week, I joke about this with my friends all the time. My wife says this to me all the time. The second person most I text is Mike, is my co-host on the show, other than my wife. Um, I'm sitting there horrified because I'm thinking I'm blessed to be on a show where things like this come up and we rightfully say, hey, we got to talk about this. I'm hearing about it. Mike gets texts all over. We know we need to dive into this. Regardless of party affiliation, folks, if you've not paid attention enough to this show, you know I'm the left-leaning member, right? Mike is the more centrist or whatever classification. He's, he's just not as left as me. It's obvious. But we both agree on what's newsworthy. And a clearly member of Congress indicted for bribery is... But instead, it's book bannings, and it's about conservatives. It's about, you know, the machinations of the right. Folks, that was a Democrat who was who was being foul in these streets. And we need to be honest with ourselves about that. I'll go one step further. I have not heard. Mike, has, I don't, and I'm just asking this because I'm ignorant on this. Have you heard the president make a comment yet? No, I, I, I have not. And, and let me let me chime in there, though, because. I say this all the time, man. It's not an R and D thing, man. It's a right and wrong thing. Like they, I, I read a piece on the Hill. Um, Al, Al Weaver, I believe, is is the guy's name who wrote the piece, and you can go check it out on the Hill dot com or, or download their app. And in the piece, he interviewed um, Jim McQueen, who used to be a chief of staff for the former senator who had the seat before Menendez had it. And he said, I want to read you a quote from this article because it's something that resonated with me right away. You can appeal to a jury in a court of law, but when you appeal to voters in the court of public opinion, the most damning evidence of this indictment is the gold bars. I don't know where you go from here. Listen, folks, like Nick said, and I watched Casino the other night, right? Nicky Santoro's got, you know, money stored underneath the, the closet door. That's like mobster movie stuff. $480,000 in the house. Tony Soprano and Carmela have that somewhere in the house. That's that's a lot of money. But the gold bars, like that changes everything. And that just, though, that is hard, concrete stuff. Like to have gold bars, nobody just has gold bars sitting around. What is this? The Italian job with Mark Wahlberg and them? Like how many more movie and, and TV show references can I make? But like before you jump in, like it's just, This should be, if I still worked in news for a network right now, this should be front and center. The first story that's on the listicle for articles, this should be the first story in the A block. And we're coming back 
with an alert and we're doing legal panels and legal experts. Now, if you want to argue, if you're a senior producer and executive producer out there and you want to argue, yeah, he's a senator, New Jersey. Uh, he may not, you know, run again, you know, because he's already he's already beat one bribery charge before now a second one. Yeah, you maybe he will resign. The seat will be up for play. Senators are not as popular as like the president of the United States being in that. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's only about like what? 600 of these jobs that are really important between the U.S. House of Representatives, the United States Senate, the president of the United States, maybe members of his cabinet. One of them gets indicted with like $500,000 worth of cash and like $70,000 worth of gold bars. And in the indictment, it says it's bribery and, a, and, and you know, uh, leaning towards a government, a foreign government to give them a contract. That stuff should be running front and center in the A block, as we like to say in TV speak. And it should be on repeat. I'm sorry, this is not an R&D thing. Networks out there, you have a job to do. And it's, it's an incredible disservice if you're going to loop the president on repeat on his indictments. And I get it. It's unprecedented. It's never happened before. This is a U.S. Senate, a U.S. Senate member that's been indicted twice, twice in the last eight years for the same crime of bribery, two different ways. One with a Florida doctor and now with three New Jersey businessmen trying to sell access and give government contracts to the government of Egypt. I mean, come on. What are we doing here? That story should be front and center. Yes, Nick, uh, one more point for you. Yeah, I mean, you know, when we think about first off, up until recently, I mean, he's had to sit, he's had to leave this post. Folks, I mean, to to Mike's point about, you know, those who may argue that um, you know, it's a senator, what to make of it, like what's the big deal? Senator Menendez was the former chairman of the Senate foreign relations committee that's right and this is a guy who apparently took money from another country mike lives in the world of facts and in respect to that i'm not going to ask you all to draw a natural conclusion but i just want you to think real hard for a minute you have someone who is the chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, who has now been indicted for taking bribes from a foreign country. Make of that what you will. But that seems to me about access. And Mike used an important term earlier, mob, mobsters, gangsters. I hear that a lot when we talk about the former president. I just heard it, the, I think it was an editorial in the Washington Post recently. We make this try. We try to make this argument that tough that Trump is some tough guy and he leans on his people a certain way, like a mob boss and whatever. And maybe that's all true. But what do you say about someone sitting on a pile of money, taking bribes from other countries? It's the same thing, and we do need to be consistent about that, because otherwise, it is totally fair to look at a network and say propaganda. Like, let's let's just be consistent is all is all I'm saying. Yeah, very well said. Listen, uh, interest of fairness to Senator Menendez. He said this in a statement for 30 years. I've withdrawn thousands of dollars in cash from my personal savings account, which I have kept for emergencies. And because of the history of my family facing confiscation in Cuba, these were monies drawn from my personal savings account based on the income I have lawfully derived over those 30 years. I look forward to addressing other issues at trial. Funny enough, uh, in the next episode, we, as always, Nick, as always, we have a legal analyst coming on, a former U.S. attorney who worked once upon a time for the office that's actually charging Senator Menendez. So we'll get a breakdown of those charges. We'll get into the Hunter Biden stuff. We'll get into the latest in former President Trump stuff. Hey, thanks for watching the Can We Please Talk podcast. Whatever clip you just watched, we hope you enjoyed it. And we hope you stick around for some more. Subscribe to the channel. My partner's over here smashing the button. Come on, do him a favor. So hit subscribe.